Free gift. This is one of the best parts about paddle boarding. There's free stuff. It can be things like footballs, half drunken bottles, McDonald's packages, you know, really, really great stuff. And in this case, oh, just what I always wanted. Well, that's mine now. <laughs> See, paddle boarding's great. Free stuff. Hi. Uh. Oh. There's a sign over there that says strictly no landing. Oh well. As they say, it's easier to uh, beg for forgiveness than ask for permission. This is officially my first winter paddle. I got a paddle board a couple of years ago because um, I was getting all kinds of back issues, probably from all the running I was doing and not doing uh, any kind of core exercises. Um, and someone said, why don't you try paddle boarding? It's great for your core, great for your back. And I did, and a lot of my back problems went away. Um, and since then, I've always wanted to do a little bit more with the paddle boarding. I'm out on the river band today with this. This is the Red Paddle Voyager paddle board that they sent me to have a look at. And uh, yeah, I was out doing some test shots and oh my goodness, it's... <coughs> Today I've got this with me. This is the 12 and a half foot long Voyager paddle board from Red Paddle Coat, who sent it to me uh, to try out. It's a quite a long, only 13 foot long touring paddle board with a ton of linkages on it, front and back, uh, like lashing points for uh, for storing luggage. And why do I have this? Well, I've got this because uh, this year I'm wanting to do some paddle boarding videos, and specifically, I want to try paddle board camping. Um, I'm on the River Ban today, it's a massive big river that runs right through the middle of Northern Ireland and I've kayaked on it a little bit and I've paddleboard on it before but I've never really had much of an adventure on it or really that many of the waterways in Northern Ireland. I spent a lot of my time, a lot of my video content is in the mountains, it's more inland, it's more inland but I love being near water um, and the paddleboard seems like a fun way uh, to to do that. So yeah, paddleboard camping hopefully coming up this summer. But I, uh, I I'm out today to test this board um, and also to practice shooting footage because when you try a new activity for the first time, people often say to me, I don't know how you do this and that and make a video at the same time. Well, it's practice. It's practice. I start a new activity. I probably have to do that activity several times without any cameras and then I have to go out and gradually figure out how to incorporate cameras into it and so far paddle boarding is the most difficult activity I've done to incorporate a camera because you're on a moving platform that if you make one mistake not only do you fall into water and it's pretty cold today um, all your equipment is going to go in with you and when you're flying a drone that means destruction of your phone and the controller because you have to have the controller sitting out. You have to have the. I have to put the controller kind of 
underneath the strap here, put the drone in the air, activate the tracking motor, get it in position, and then paddle. If I fall in, that <laughs> the camera, the controller, everything is going into this dark murky water. I'll lose my phone, I'll lose the controller. So yeah, it's really, really tricky to shoot. And um, there are on this board at the top here, you can see that round circle and that one there. Those are action camera mounting points, which I didn't realize this board had until I brought it out and I didn't bring anything I connected into those. So that's good to know. Um, and even just standing on it, like holding the camera, it's very, very disorientating because when you're on the board, you're most likely to on balance when you're like looking at your own feet or sort of looking at something that's close to you. When you're looking over more into the distance, you seem to, you've got a better sense of balance, uh, which is why holding a camera that's like a couple of feet from your face while on a paddle board, while standing, is a really bad idea, at least for me anyway at this stage until I get a little bit more, uh, more experienced doing this. So yeah, paddle boarding, that's one of two new types of camping I'm hoping to add uh, to the roster for this year. So I'd be interested to know if you're interested in seeing that, and I'll probably actually make a video that sort of explains what paddle boarding is more as well. I mean, in a nutshell, paddle boarding is standing on a big wobbly inflatable board with a stick. That's kind of, that's kind of it. One of the things I really, really love about paddle boarding is it's just, it's so much more accessible than uh, something like kayaking because the equipment involved packs down so, so small. I mean, you can literally fit it all in the backpack, albeit a very heavy backpack, but you can get it down. You can get it down that small and you can just leave it, you know, permanently in the van or, or wherever. And when you're out on a, on a, a paddle board compared to a kayak, uh, you're, sta you're standing up. So as I said, it's better for your core. Um, but also I find it gives you a different feeling of, um, I don't know, just of location because you're, if you're on a, if you're on a, a kayak, you're essentially three feet off the water, um, so that's you can only see about three feet. Whereas you're on the board, you're as tall as you are, so you know five six feet. You can see a lot better, and it's I find it's yeah gives you a nicer vantage point, and also it's a very very sociable sport. I'm entirely alone today, but there's a group of people I started going paddle boarding with uh, last year. If you're wondering what's so good about paddle boarding, just just shut up. And just listen to this for a few minutes and try and tell me you do not feel more relaxed. And so far I'm out today, I've seen an otter, I've seen a kingfisher, I've seen a cormorant, and I've seen a heron. There's just so many like animals and stuff that live alongside the river. But Red as a company are really, really good. They're like one of the very first paddleboard companies. The paddleboards are made to like a ridiculously high standard. Um, they're, they're boards that are pretty much made to last for decades, essentially. Uh, one thing I will say just here is if you're interested in getting into paddleboarding, don't go and buy an incredibly cheap board. I'm not saying you have to buy a red board because they are premium boards, they are expensive, but don't buy like ones out of like Lidl or somewhere like that because what you'll find is they just don't seem to ever get to the right pressure and people who are on them are just sort of bent in the middle like a like a like a banana it may be okay if you're only going to try it once or twice and never do it again um but yeah there is the the the, the pricey ones are pricey for a reason it's kind of similar to buying a bike if you buy a really cheap bike it's gonna fall apart or needs some major upgrades within about five years whereas you buy a really quality bike it's gonna last a lifetime so uh, something that might be good to do is if you have any questions about paddle boarding, stick them down in the comments and I'll try and answer those in a future video. Okay, thanks for watching this short video and maybe someday I will catch you out in the middle of the river and push you in. I'm quite a menace on the water and people go paddle boarding with me. They don't like when I paddle behind them because usually it means they're about to get nudged. 